Dear audience, welcome to the Soil at Risk panel. My name is Laura Höyer and I'm from the Baltic Sea Action Group and I will be chairing this panel. Well, in this panel, we really do have top experts representing different very important stakeholders promoting soil health. We have here uh, Juuso Joona, farmer and educator. We have here uh, Jari Liski, research professor at the Finnish Meteorological Institute. We have here Kati Ihamäki, vice president at OP Financial Group. Uh, then we have Juha Nousiainen, he is senior vice president at Valio Dairy. And then we have Ville Niinistä, member of the European Parliament. Warmly welcome. Well, the panel discussion will focus on solutions in order to scale actions to receive maximum impacts. At the end of the panel, we do have time for questions from the audience. So please be active in the chat. Well, for the panel discussions, we have had beforehand a farmer dialogue with Time Out Foundation, as well as separate group discussions. The messages from the very positive farmer dialogue, you can read from a blog, and you can find this blog from the website of the Soil at Risk Symposium, and it is also now put to the chat, the link to that blog. And the messages from these very interesting group discussions, these we will hear now through a video. Kutsuimme Soil at Risk Symposiumin taustatyönä joukon viljelijöitä, yritysten ja rahoitusmaailman edustajia sekä maatalouden ohjauskeinoja tuntevaa väkeä pohtimaan, miten maaperän hyvinvointia voidaan edistää ja mitä haasteita sen tiellä on. Tässä videolla esittelemme ryhmien tuotokset. Moi, mä oon Tuomas Mattila ja viljelijätyöryhmän mukaan suurimmat haasteet on tiivistyminen ja vesitalous, koulutus ja kannusteet, ja lisäksi tarvitaan tutkimustietoja ja yhteistyötä viljelijän päätöksen tueksi. Tiivistyminen se johtuu siitä, että koneiden paino on kasvanut paljon nopeammin kuin viljelijöiden osaaminen. Tämä on ongelma, mikä pitäisi tunnustaa ja saada loppumaan. Jotta tässä onnistutaan, niin viljelijät tarvitsevat luotettavaa tutkimustietoa viljelytoimien vaikutuksista maaperään ja maaperän toimintoihin ja sekä tutkijoiden apua tulosten tulkintaan. Meidän pitäisi edelleen kehittää sellaista viljelyyttä ja neuvojien koulutusta ja kannustimia, jotka keskittyy maan kasvukunnan hoidon kannalta oleellisiin asioihin. Ja mottona se, että viljelijä on sekä maaperän uhka että mahdollisuus. Hei, olen Jaana Husukallio. Ohjauskeinoja pohtivassa työryhmässä keskusteltiin aiheesta. Julkisen ohjauksen kehittäminen ja tutkimustieto, markkinoiden hinnoittelulogiikka ja tietopuutteet. Maatalouden ohjauskeinojen, kuten eräiden tukien kehittämisessä, tulee entistä vahvemmin huomioida tutkimustieto siitä, miten turvataan maaperän kunto ja arvo. Markkinat eivät tarpeeksi arvosta viljelijä lisäpanostuksia maaperään. Hinnoittelun pitäisi tarjota viljelijöille lisätuloja, jolloin vastuullisten kuluttajien odotuksiin pystyttäisiin vastaamaan paremmin, ja panostukset maaperään näkyisivät viljelijän kukkarossa. Tietopuutteet estävät uusien menetelmien ja ohjauskeinojen käyttöönottoa. Koko ruokajärjestelmä tarvitsee lisää tietoa maaperän kuntoa edistävien viljelytoimien kannattavuudesta sekä eri ohjauskeinojen toimivuudesta. Hei, olen Kati Hamäki, tuon terveisiä yritys- ja rahoitusryhmältä. Me totesimme isoimpina haasteina, että tarvitsemme tuoda arvoa tekijöille saada tietoa näkyväksi ja helposti ymmärrettäväksi sekä kehittää yhteistyötä tutkimuksen ja yritysten välillä. Miten saadaan maaperän kunnosta huolehtiminen sisällytettyä liiketoiminnallisiin tavoitteisiin niin, että se tuottaa taloudellista arvoa myös viljelijälle? Tämä voisi onnistua esimerkiksi sitomalla maaperän kunnosta huolehtiminen rahoitus- tai vakuutusprosesseihin tai niin, että ruokaketjun yritykset tukevat viljelijän maaperätyötä taloudellisesti. Maaperän kunnosta saadut hyödyt ilmastolle, biodiversiteetille ja vesien laadulle pitää saada näkyviksi ja todennetuksi. Lisäksi niistä pitää viestiä selkeästi. Siksi tarvitaan toimiva seuranta- ja ennustejärjestelmä. Nyt pitää miettiä, miten löytyy aikaa, resursseja, kykyä ja kannustimia yhteiskehittää käytännön ratkaisuja tutkimusten, tutkimuksen ja yritysten välillä. Tarvitaan ihan uudenlaista yhdessä tekemistä myös tiedeyhteisön toimintatapoihin.
Yes, and I want to warmly now also thank all those who participated in the group discussion. We saw all the faces at the end of the vid video. So, dear panelists, what are your first impressions of the challenges presented in this video? A very short comment from each, and we could start from here, from you, so please. Thank you. Well, I think that though we need more research uh, from the soil to understand soil better, we do have enough knowledge to take action to improve soil health and, and the benefits following that. Thank you, Yusa. And Yari? Well, my first thoughts are this, that in the, in the video we, we really get an idea that how many different aspects there are to the soil health and how many different stakeholders it is uh, important for. And then when I think about the, the role of research, maybe the most important message there was that, that I got was this kind of the, that the, the scientific research results and especially solutions based on science are needed. And then they need to be uh, you know, communicated with the st stakeholders effectively, I would say like designed together with the stakeholders. And that is something that the, maybe like the academia hasn't been doing that much in the past. So it, it faces also that challenge now with like uh, producing the solutions for soil health. Thank you, Yari and Kati. <clears throat> from the video, I had a couple of ideas as well, but from the morning I wrote down, I think it was Sara's uh, words, that we should be working together with the soil, not against it. Yeah. And, and I, I, I will keep that, and I also think that most important message here also was that we need to work together and make the, uh, the um, information, like you said, we already have lots of information, make that visible for all of us and understandable as well. So that, that would be my biggest take on, on that. Thank you, Kati. Kati, you Yes, I, I have a couple of points here. And uh, first of all, I thought that we need a system for sustainable fair trade in a way that the whole value chain can benefit uh, from the climate, climate work, for example. And, and, and I think that uh, we need to uh, increase the awareness of the, of, the, of the thing that the food production system is not a problem. It should be, it should be a solution. That's a very clear statement. And Ville? Well, I think if you think about soil health, it goes back to the traditional way of seeing agriculture as something where you preserve uh, from generation to the next the land in good health. But we have lost contact with that, with modern way of, of how agriculture and food production globally is over uh, consuming uh, natural resources, uh, over consuming uh, nutrients and not within the boundaries of nature, uh, the way we uh, produce and what we produce. So this has to be kind of like Re rethought again, and the data is there, the research is there. We just need to imply it into the system. Thank you, Ville. <laughs> and actually, this brings us well in, very, very nicely back to the farmer dialogue, where we had a lot of discussion about this. And so I really hope you all have time to read this, this blog on the Symposium webpage. And Ville, you nicely brought us to the soil. So this is a soil at risk symposium. So I think we should start from the soil, go to the field. Uh, big challenges, actually, that the farmers have also faced this spring are the problems in the field with soil compaction and, and water management. So what solutions do we have? I especially look at you, Juso, now. <coughs> Thanks. Soil com compaction is a worldwide problem which results from monocultures, loss of organic matter and heavy machinery. And, uh, Compact soil doesn't work like it should. It doesn't infiltrate water. It doesn't retain water. Uh, root, roots doesn't grow as wide as they should, and, and microbes do not thrive. Uh, and this is clearly seen, for example, in Finland this spring. First, we had really rainy uh, May when it was supposed to be a sowing season, and then now currently we are facing a heat wave and, and a drought. Which, which makes crops to suffer. So I see that extreme weather has become normal, which is really bad for, for us farmers and for the soil as well. And to adapt, uh, we should implement, for example, those traditional farming methods that we were talking about, diverse crop rotation, uh, soil cover with multiple uh, cover crops, 
uh, organic amendments, moderate machinery, and uh, right timing of the work. That's one, one of the key issues here. Uh, so many and several multi-beneficial practices that could be supported, for example, by the, by the policy or, or advisory. Thank you. You are very clear. And Juha, you want to continue, please. That was very good, uh, uh, good points you, you made. I think that uh, the farming practices uh, during the time when my grandpa was, uh, was, uh, was a dairy farmer, I think they, they had very much those, uh, those uh, practices uh, in use. But I think that the main problem, in, in, for example, in increasing uh, size of machinery is that there is a, a large demand of efficiency in the, in the whole uh, society. And also in, in, within the within the agri business, and and and, uh, and and we need to solve the problem, how we can in, improve our 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 methodologies, how we are cultivating our fields, and how we can uh, still uh, uh, be enough efficient mm. so that the production will be uh, that that goes goes efficient that it, it's it suits for the demands of the society. Yes. Uh, and here you have to mention that it's, it's also about how efficiency is, is measured or, or thought about. Is it just input or output efficiency, or should we also uh, yeah. cover uh, nutrient or carbon efficiency? I, I totally agree. Yes, and Ville, please. Yes, I, I think when we speak about the concept of efficiency, it has been very narrowly seen mm -hmm. as the crops in the next few years, mm -hmm. and you use methods to, to increase that, but you don't take into account the nutrient loss to the, to the water waste, you don't take into account the climate effect, you don't take into account the biodiversity effect, and you don't take into account the long-term soil effects, and that means that, that the land uh, degenerates. So if these are taken into the equation of what is efficiency, then we have totally different mm -hmm. agriculture and also subsidies and systems to support it. So I think they should be brought together. Mm. Thank you, Will. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Western agriculture nowadays is very technologically intensive. And I think it should be more uh, knowledge intensive and, and soil centric or mm -hmm. biologically uh, intensive, more like. That's well put. And Ville, you nicely put us to the next question. You mentioned subsidies. We need incentives. It was very obvious when we listened to the group discussions or to the farmer dialogue. So we need financing from, from public and private sources. And um, we could actually start discussing the public steering first. And I'm now looking especially at Ville. Uh, what should we start doing? What should we stop doing? Well, if you put it bluntly, we should stop giving subsidies for any kind of agriculture without kind of like focus on uh, long-term sustainability, long-term productivity subsidies should not be seen uh, as a way of supporting the agricultural production itself because it, it, we should turn the markets into a system where the producer gets a decent uh, pay uh, with the product. And subsidies should be about uh, forming agriculture into something which is more sustainable to the environment, more sustainable when it comes to long-term productivity. So that should be the role of subsidies. So we should, su as long as we give subsidies as a way of giving farmers basic income, it means that the market doesn't have any need to pay, to pay for the products properly for the farmers. So it's against the farmer's own interest as well. Maybe you also you want to continue? Yeah, to acknowledge that farming in Western countries is very heavily subsidized and funded. So from my farmer point of view, I would like to see more subsidies and funding targeted to uh, or from direct payments to result-based uh, payments for environmental measures and activities. And I see that this can also improve the resilience of the farming and, in a way, also productivity in the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and behind the subsidies, there are also conditions, the conditionality, which should safeguard that no harm for environment is done in, in this farming business. And, and then the benefits above that should be rewarded for farmer. Yes, you have. I, th I have a feeling that the farmers generally, they really want their income uh, w 
with, with the with the with the production, not not as a, as a subsidies, but but there is uh, I think the society, I mean the demand of cheap food and and, and cheap cheap production is is quite quite powerful, and and, and that's why I think we we have this kind of subsidy system a, a bit complicated as well, and and but the farmers, uh, I think they they. They like that they could have the mm. income uh, connected to the products. Thank you, Juha. So that was very evident in the farmer mm. dialogue yes. also. So that brings us back well to that discussion. Mm. Do we want to continue with the public or do we go to the private? Well, I would like to add that we only have a disguise of, of a cheap food on the market currently. So it's, it's only cheap for the maybe the, the consumer that I would like also forget to consumers and, and have more active uh, civil society who participate in, in food production uh, in, a, in a way. So the cost of, of food we produce today is very high. Uh, Kati first and then Bill. Yeah, I think from the uh, financing side, it would be also very important to have predictable, predictable legislation so that we could look further as well so it's not only the subsidized for today but also for the future yeah. because the financing is usually done with the long-term uh, interest as well so so that would help us as well that's a good point and will Yes, well, I was just about to say what Kati said here, that, that the long-term uh, expectations of the consumers are more and more turning towards looking for uh, carbon-smart products and mm -hmm. products that support biodiversity, products that are good for, for the Baltic Sea and, 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 and lakes in Finland. So they want to support that kind of agriculture, so the subsidies and the, the production systems should move into incitements towards that kind of production as well. And I think if we go back to, uh, there is a current deal on this this is obviously boring to speak about EU rules, but the, it, it's a lot of money and it's the basis of agriculture in, in Finland as well. So there is a new deal on the European Union uh, common agriculture policy, which I don't like, but, but for the next seven years it means that there is a slightly higher environmental incentive than currently, but it's still nothing uh, compared to the scale that we need in change. The majority will be hectare-based subsidies in the future as well. Uh, most of the environmental actions will be voluntary. So the idea of trying to bring environmental solutions uh, and carbon sink farming, for example, into the whole system for all producers, that is still lacking in the uh, cap. But we can do it more with the national subsidies. So there is still the national environmental subsidy system, which should be, after this cap deal, which is not so good, which should be strengthened and done more, a lot more robust for the environment. I think it's in the interest of the farmers, because the, otherwise the consumers needs and the farmers what they produce, these will keep on, become more dispersed from each other, and it's not very good. As we were looking for solutions, you said you want to continue from there. The well, well to add the requirements for the farming, the environment and the climate change is challenging the farming really heavily, and now the common agriculture policy doesn't contribute enough uh, to that, so the farmers who are doing or, or already to mitigate and adapt the climate change are not rewarded mm -hmm. unless uh, it's a bit against IC. And I, I actually do not see any improvement <clears throat> in the current cap uh, negotiations uh, comparing the, the previous or current uh, season. Actually, the uh, funding from the first pillar direct payments are uh, decreasing comparing the current current season. So. Uh, that's really not enough to do, and I really hope that the national strategic plans are not uh, raised to the bottom. Instead, uh, I hope to see some kind of battle who, are, who is making the uh, more, more ambition climate policy, and the winners uh, in, in this game could be the farmers and farming and food production, because really this this extreme weather is mm, mm. really challenging. If not farmers are taking actions to mitigate and adapt it, we are really in problems. And, and uh, the policy is really something, and funding, also private funding, should be something to, to support farmers to take these actions, which many times needs investments in maybe technology, but mostly to knowledge and, and, uh, and, and uh, to take advisory and, and maybe trialing new things. It's all, always for the farmers to st step forward. 
Yes. Maybe did you, uh, if we move on, you, you also mentioned private sector and private funding. So in the group discussions, of course, especially in the business group, we discussed that the challenge is how can we include soil health in business objectives so that it profits the farmer as well. So what solutions do we have here? Especially I'm looking at Kati and Juha here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, uh, that's, a, that's a good, good question. Um, we launched uh, in, in the beginning of 2018 uh, sustainability bonus system for our our for our milk we are pr purchasing from from cooperatives and, and farmers uh, that was directed to to animal welfare now we are updating the system in a way that uh, that uh, it includes for example regenerative farming practices for example and other other uh, uh, climate mitigation uh, uh, handprint measures, for example. Um, we hope that we can, we can create a system which is convincing uh, the consumers, me and you and everybody, okay. us, that when they are selecting uh, uh, food and, and other products from, 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 from the shelves of the supermarket, they, can, they are willing to, willing to pay something uh, 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 when we are giving the bonus to the, to the, to the primary, primary production farmers. So there are, I know that there are other sustainability bond systems uh, uh, which are planned, but, uh, but that still we need to work, uh, as I said, uh, to the direction of fair trade, sustainable fair trade supporting uh, uh, sustainable uh, food production, uh, climate, uh, biodiversity, animal welfare. Thank you. That was very nice and concrete answer about sort of an example from, from Valia. And Kati, please. Yes, at OP we do have products for, uh, especially for the bigger corporations for sustainability linked loans or green loans. But we should start developing more of these products for the farmers as well, and then for the like the medium-sized companies. So to say, farm, farms are usually small or medium-sized companies for us in our accounting. So and and then, but but it has been quite hard to to predict the future potential so far because the uh, the uh, the carbon pricing for farming doesn't work completely yet so so to kind of uh, see the future potential as also you mentioned for the uh, consumer willingness to pay that would be one aspect of it but also the, the possible carbon farming and, and and carbon credits for instance could be built in as an incentive and and, and in these sustainability linked loans for instance your in interest rate is lower if you uh, meet the targets so this type of, of of products also i think there will be investors especially in the future and coming years when we develop the uh, measures uh, based on the data that we have and research that we have I think there will be investors who want to invest in the uh, the uh, carbon farming and, and, and soil health and so on. So so these products are only emerging, and then we saw a huge leap on the sustainable investing and, and funding last year. So I think that will continue, and maybe we find products in this sector as well, hopefully, and we can together also develop. But that needs data, like I said earlier. That needs measurable data because uh, in order to develop these products, being then the loans, uh, sustainability link loans, you need measures against which then you you grant the uh, the uh, the uh, lower rates or or invest. So, so the, these are the ones that we should develop together with different players, and those would work in favor for for of course the sector itself, the uh, the agricultural sector or farming, and for us as well. Is, uh, the legislation at the moment uh, recognizes mostly the uh, the risks that we have, yeah. because it's the kind of uh, the uh, the uh, requirements for uh, 
what's the word, prudency, so, so vakavaraisuus in Finnish. So we have to take that into account when making the investment decisions or funding decisions. But we should also seek for opportunities, not only f for the, the kind of a mapping the risks, but opportunities as well. It's a soil like risk symposium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's nicely you have risk yeah. sort of orientation yeah. there also. Ville, please. Yeah, if I may shortly on what Juha said, and Kati said uh, a kind of like answer from the political side, uh, Juha is very correct about the trade rules, and, and we are working on that at the European level, that, that trade deals with different uh, regions of the world would include uh, environmental and, and uh, uh, sustainability standards when it comes to agricultural products. For example, the current discussion about EU-Mercosur deal with, with Southern America, the Parliament's majority has said that we will not ratify this deal before we get uh, guarantees from countries like Brazil that Amazon's uh, forest loss deforestation which is uh, due to agricultural pressure that that will be stopped so 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 there there are demands we can make to other regions in trade deals to make sure that then we don't get in products that don't follow sustainability even decent minimum sustainability criteria so i think that's important yeah, mm. yeah. thank you yes Yeah, according to what Kati said uh, and Juha earlier, I would like to say that to avoid greenwash, farmers should be rewarded and paid more of those sustainable or regenerative products. And then it comes to the basis of the pricing. Is it any more to kilograms or tons per hectare, or is it more carbon sequestration or, or the nutrient density of the food? And these issues are really rapidly developing currently. Uh, what do we need is especially the metrics, the common metrics, and luckily we have Yari who is developing them in the Finnish Meteorological Institute, and we hear later more. Uh, but but this is the crucial is issue here, so it, it really ha has to go to the end to the farmer. The one big issue here is who owns the carbon credits, who owns the carbon sequestration. So it's not it should not be socialized to the To the, for example, to na national inventories, it should be really owned by the farmer, the operator. Yep. Otherwise, it, it doesn't go lo longer from the roots. I see. Yes, you are. Yes, I would uh, a bit add what Kati said that uh, about the investments on, on carbon farming. I think luckily uh, those investments are not that high, and uh, and and and. Uh, Many farmers they can they can start with with quite quite low uh, uh, investments and, and and we are quite very well know I mean the handpicked measures we need there uh, on regenerative farming system or carbon farming farming system. But I I totally agree uh, uh, point that that, that those those uh, second street units should be the property of, of the farmer. Without that, that basic thing, I think the incentive for the farmer disappears. Mm -hmm. Right. And I now remind the audience, so we have good, nice, active chat and a lot of questions, but please keep posting those questions. They can be a little bit lack before we get those questions, so don't wait until the end of the panel. But if I think, I, if I give a question and then I give Jari the floor, because Uh, Yari is waiting to <laughs> tell about the research, but yes, as we discussed, so if we give incentives, we should be able to verify it. Mm. And so how do we make the benefits of healthy soil to the climate, but also to biodiversity and waters visible all also to different stakeholders and also to, to a large audience? And as we discussed already with Jean-François, Susanna and Yari Liski earlier today, so is the science ready? We heard something before, but if you want to sort of come back to this issue, where are we now? Yeah, well, thanks, Laura. So, yeah, I've been listening with great interest <laughs> this discussion that has been going on here, and, and obviously it's like uh, whether it's the development of the policies for the agriculture and climate, or whether it's the like uh, calculating the carbon and other environmental impacts for wood, for food products, or whether it's developing new financial instruments or kind of a, how to be sure about the sustainability, long-term sustainability businesses. All this comes down to whether we are able to uh, quantify the carbon and other climate impacts and biodiversity, uh, water effects and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, uh, 
Uh, I, I think that the uh, well, I, I could answer or try give my view on, yes. on your question, yes. Laura. But I would I'd rather like bring up another thing. It says to, to the maybe if I can ask the other panels to comment that that I, I, during the recent years I've been sort of I have been thinking, and I, my feeling has been that the kind of the value of these quantified units and the kind of the value of of the knowledge. That, that would need to be known because it's limiting like policy, uh, carbon footprint estimates, financial instruments, the farmers' uh, future uh, like uh, visions and stuff like that. So I, and then as that has been grown very rapidly. Mm -hmm. I would say not linearly, but rather exponentially. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, even though us in the in the research field we are doing our best to develop these systems, but still I feel that and we have been able to make make progress quite quickly just by putting the pieces the the long tradition of doing agricultural research, combining that with technologies, uh, satellite technologies like computing, so bringing te technologies and all these digital solutions there, so uh, like the research community has done quite a bit and also been sort of bringing this like, and making progress quite effectively. Still I feel that the gap between the, the value of this knowledge and this information and these quantified units and, and the kind of the the rate at which we are making progress is is it, it, it's not balanced, and the, the kind of the gap is just uh, you know widening between these two. And I don't know if, if you this is my feeling. I don't know I don't know how, if if this is a problem. Then what should be done to this this problem? You have. Uh, that was a good point uh, raised by Yari. Uh, when we think about the cost of carbon uh, in the ETS system, it was one and a half month ago. The price uh, broke the le level of 50 euros. So that's, I think, one definite indication of what's happening on, on the market. But I totally agree uh, Yari's point that uh, knowledge, uh, I mean the data, which we should pros process the knowledge, the value of the knowledge should increase parallelly when, 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 the, when the cost mm. of carbon, uh, in, for example, in the ETS system is in increasing. Of course, the voluntary credits and the price for the voluntary credits are, uh, ha, have been increasing. They are a bit following, uh, following the ETS prices, but, but I, that was a good point raised by Jari. Thank you. And Ville? Well, I think what we should do, at least in to start with, uh, with, with making that, that knowledge that we have and the data uh, to be a bigger part of the system, we start uh, by, by bits and bits and then uh, to bring it to the whole system. So, so we still don't have clear subsidies or, or subsidy allocation based on data on that we know that certain kinds of farming uh, practices uh, with certain products will cause uh, in certain soil types uh, so, uh, some kind of results that we, we, we have the scale of the results. Uh, when we know the land quality, when we know the methods, when we know the products, so, so those should be applied into the subsidy system at the local level. So you start with the local level and you start to bring it into the agriculture system, agricultural system and also you should be able to count uh, an estimate of a carbon uh, uh, effect of a specific product. Uh, so, so we should start with that, what we have. Uh, and I understand that we, it's difficult to count the total anthropogenic effect of agriculture to sinks or biodiversity at, at the EU level, but, but that is not what we need to do at the first stage. We need to start with, with the regional and local level and implementing the knowledge we have. That's a good point. I, before, I think, Kati first and then Yari, yes. Yeah, that's a very important question about the use of, the, of that knowledge that we have and information. I think uh, one aspect is that there seems to be conflicting information sometimes as well, and that's many times raised by media and, and raised in different discussions. So some of, some of us, some of the consumers, for instance, have kind of mixed messages. They don't know what to, to, mm. to believe in. And, and uh, also we at one point tried to uh, develop a product where we would have a kind of estimated the, uh, the, uh, the, well, the carbon of different products, but also different services and, and the carbon footprint of different, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, forest, uh, forest uh, products that we have, but also for the farming. And we always had this 
coming to us that, well, it's not very secure yet because these people say this, these people say that, and it, it was conflicting. And then we said, like, OK, let's wait until okay. it's completely 100% sure. And, and we do have this OP forest product where you can, as a, a forest owner, you can estimate the value of the CO2. But we need to put it always like bluntly there that mm -hmm. this is not 100% sure. So. It seems that we've been waiting this 100% sure mm -hmm. information for but years. But it's enough, you know, the yeah. direction. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and that's like the roadmap to go there. And, yeah. and this is the 100, not 100% 100 yeah. sure information that we will ever have. Oh, so yeah, yeah. so I that will... seems to be the problem as well. Please, Yari, our professor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe like this last point that you raised, or the, 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 one of the last points that you raised is this kind of the communications is that the, like if, you, if you're dependent or if, if you let the media to sort of to affect the kind of your facts in companies, I don't know that's that's the I don't know that I don't think that that is right. And I, I'm at least I think that that kind of has been recognized in the in the scientific community that we need to uh, improve the communication between the policy making and between the like different businesses and the I mean that 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 is that is easily done especially if that is combined to what is also needed here is that we develop these solutions together that is just a part of mm -hmm. that and that is that is maybe one of the like the big changes happening in the research community and ac academia mm -hmm. acknowledging this and we're talking about such an like a crucial question and we uh, that 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 it, 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 it needs to be our role to do that, and then maybe like uh, I totally also agree that we already, even though we do not have a complete system, even if we don't even have a satisfactory system for our future needs, still we may, we know like has been said by everybody here is that we know the directions already. We are ready to move, and then I, I want to mention the the, the word piloting. I don't know if mm. you mentioned that, that, that even if we are not able to cover the whole of the EU now, if we are able to cover one farm, yeah. ten farms, mm. and then other countries, a okay. few farms there, we learn from that and then we are able also, that's also a part of the communication that we are able to show what we are able to do at this stage and what we are not able to, where to improve. I think this is, uh, this is a kind of, this kind of a co-design circle that we need to uh, strengthen. Thank you. You are a very clear answer. You, sir. I totally agree. And regarding uh, practical measures in the farms, what farmers are doing, uh, we really know the direction where to go and, and what to do and which actions to take. It, it's not necessary to know the numbers, what are the effects currently, but farmers will see, mm -hmm. uh, for example, if they are <clears throat> increasing the diversity in crop rotation, that how they, they uh, crops are improving and there's less diseases or when they are increasing the soil organic matter they uh, constantly see how how it's Im improving the soil water holding capacity for example but what is maybe the weakest link here is uh, that the information transfer to the farmers is a bit too slow maybe the foreigners do get their information easily from from the social media, for example, or from from the internet, but the bigger group uh, behind still need uh, support, especially from advisory. Mm -hmm. So we should really uh, improve the knowledge and uh, uh, know-how of the advisors, both private and uh, organizational. Uh, sector and that's work what we have already done in carbon action platform for example that's i i guess the issue at least european wide maybe the world wide as well yeah. i would you. still like Thank to you. just on yaris point say one contradictory remark there are some areas where we need piloting but there are some areas that are beyond piloting and those should be implemented to the whole system we know for example action against nutrient loss to the baltic sea and and uh, to lakes and and rivers we know that we should mainstream uh, solutions that that include uh, keeping the nutrients into the ground and and, and there we have been uh, too long working with voluntary measures which leads to inefficient results. Yeah. So, so some things are prepared to go beyond piloting also. Uh, it was one country you have been so positive and agreeing <laughs> on everything. It's contradictory. Yeah. I was happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And remember that at least we have a mixture of interests. That means that we should talk to different interest groups with their own language. So the, sometimes mm. farmers are not maybe very 
interested about carbon sequestration, but they may be interested about uh, weather resistant soils. Uh, so what, what is really useful for them uh, mm -hmm. in that time and place? Mm. That was really nicely also in the farmer dialogue, mm. this kind of discussion that the farmers really see the benefits from the soil. And so they are not, that's maybe the thing that is driving the action. But now I think it's good time to take some questions from the chat, from the audience. So we start with, oh, oh actually now I remember, you, you, Jari, you promised to give me a number. When, when are you ready? <laughs> because maybe if not everybody was following the discussion with you and Jean-Francois, Susanna, you had a very, very clear answer. When will you have a verification system that you can use? Yes, in, in, during the morning session, we yes. were discussing about the verification system for think, carbon yeah. sequestration. And the, I think we both agreed with uh, Jean-Francois, Susanna from uh, Indra yeah. in, in France and myself is that, that maybe we're talking about a few years or five years. Yes. Uh, and, and literally, we are today in a different position compared to where this whole community was maybe five years ago, because then the, the directions were not clear that what, what to do, what kind mm -hmm. of system systems to build. Now that starts to be like the different groups have a little bit different, like some differences there, but the overall idea seems to be clear. So now we are in a, in a sort of status of that we just need to do the things to make it applicable for different fields, make it applicable for different uh, farming practices and stuff. But that's that's sort of, uh, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's mm. easier to just keep on going where you're going if you compared to that you don't know even where to go so and, and that is why uh, I think we both agreed on this oh, kind of we're yes. talking about maybe like a five years but then then it involves that we just uh, are able to put the, the pieces the existing oh. pieces together and then make use of like a technologies like satellite technologies and the, this kind of like a computing uh, facilities and digital solutions but yeah and uh, yeah, but still, I'm, I'm not, then it, of, of course it takes a while then to bring that to the policy making. Maybe the, some of the companies are uh, like they can adopt that knowledge faster, oh. but still, even though that's maybe a good news, but the, we yeah. don't have time to waste. So yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. you know. Oh, but that's Very concrete. Uh, yes, you have. I have a short comment here. Do we have that time, that five years? <laughs> because, because we have a very challenging targets in Finland. 2035, also in our company. Mm. So we need to start doing those handprint measures just now. Mm. Although we don't have that system mm. ready, how we can communicate, measure and communicate our, our results. That's good. But we need to start now. Yes. Yeah. Um, if yeah, I may yes. yeah, just comment that back, it's just that of course the system in five years' time will not be the final version. If it will be continuously developed, mm -hmm. maybe just to clarify, and this is a, like a, it, it's it's a fair point of re request to, to clarify a bit. Maybe I'm thinking about it like if if we started to develop a system, for example, where the Finnish fields would all be covered with a system that would be spatially so uh, explicit or accurate that we can identify fields and the the uh, farmers' fields, and we can then then uh, have reasonable values for those fields so that we can uh, link them to uh, carbon footprint estimates of products and then maybe to like link them to financial instruments and stuff like that. That, that is what I meant. So to, and then of course we will reduce the uncertainties all the time. But here the point in the science is that we should do everything we can to avoid systematic errors. We can live with the, like, the, like the random error and then try to reduce that because we can detect where, where it comes from. But if, if we are biased then, and then we are just promoting uh, bad decisions or incorrect decisions. Top notch mm. science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Best possible science behind it. Use. Juha's point is very important and even more important when we think about that we have just lost the next seven years in the mm. European agricultural policy. Mm -hmm. right. Exactly, and that's why I also would say, like to say as policymaker that, that what should we should do with the, the current possibilities we had at hand domestically that we should apply the domestic subsidies into these new mm -hmm. solutions mm -hmm. which we know that gives the right direction mm -hmm. so we should push that direction as fast as possible I think it's in the interest of Finnish uh, consumers and the public mm -hmm. it's in the interest of the farmers and in, in the long term it's in the interest of productivity as well very clear solution and in every clear. EU country I guess mm -hmm. yeah, yeah they, all, they yeah, should yeah, do yeah. the same mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say that the also like a, uh, what comes to this like a more sort of uh, uh, straightforward and direct communication between policymakers and companies and the science is that the I, I, I'm like personally very interested in strengthening that and I think I speak on behalf of many in the in the academia that that they also want to do that and that then it makes it also possible for us to get the vision or to foresee what kind of systems we will have in the future. Oh. So when I first uh, saw this question that 
when, when we, how many years yeah, and you yeah, will yeah, be ready? Yeah. I thought that that's, uh, I'm not, is this the most clever si the question to ask? But yeah. now I understand yeah. that it was because yeah. it really makes us think <laughs> and how to, how to, you know. But, but I, I still think your demand level is quite high. Yeah, if yeah, you yeah, want yes. with satellite yeah, data yeah. to know yeah, yeah. the exact carbon level of each, each farm or field or parts yeah. of field. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm just saying that I know that we need to have a, a verification system in the long term, but we have a lot of knowledge already currently. So, so yeah. that level is high. What you are level aiming of demand. at? Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but the, the, then on the other hand, I've been thinking like, like the, so, so the solutions, how to use the satellite information and stuff, is there and is being used in other yeah. fields like mm. a routine. It should we be have used. like our mobile, mobile network, which is like amazing things. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, if you think sure. about what do we do in the, in the uh, greenhouse gas inventory systems in EU countries to, to quantify the carbon sequestration, is, is that's like from a stone age it's compared true. to what yeah. we do with mobile I phones. Agree. That that is right. what I mean, that's and that is why I say that we are able to make progress quite quickly mm. if we are able to adopt these technologies there. Correct. Mm. That was a good comparison. But now we go to the questions from the audience. Uh, so we have Hamada Abdel Rahman commented actually in the morning session, but it's so well suited for you. So, so I will take this question now. So most of farmers won't accept to add one more species, even with extended services to their orchard or field. Most of uh, certification scheme, even organic, promote diversity and cover crop, uh, but does not make it a requirement. How to help farmers understand the importance of diversity? You can see that it's good. You can see that just <laughs> great. That's a long question. Yeah, yeah. Well, the current monocultures, they are very simple and straightforward, and that's maybe why they have been so successful. Mm. And to adapt more diversity. To, to the farming, to crop rotation, and to one field. For example, in, in our farm, we have a very versatile crop rotation, and in every field there grows uh, several plants or crops in, in companion. So it, it takes, it's not so easy anymore, but it's much more fruitful. It, it takes uh, concentration, it takes uh, right timings, it, it's, there's more pieces in the puzzle after that, uh, so you really have to farm and, and consider the soil. So it takes a systemic change, actually. Mm. Uh, mm. It, it's not, not anymore so simple, but it's very uh, uh, grateful uh, because after that we may give up from, from the pesticides, for example, and, and do much less work in the soil. And that's very uh, good for the farmer and how to help to understand the importance of, of diversity for the farmer. It comes from the trialing. Mm -hmm. For example, in our farm, we have begun all the good practices with trialing them. And that see, seeing myself, ourselves, uh, the benefits uh, helps us to adopt those good practices and also give up those bad trials mm -hmm. uh, in the next years. So uh, it should be it's again about a bit about policy. It's very uh, sad again, but because funding and uh, uh, subsidy requirements often are quite strict, so they don't uh, make possible to do kind of wild trials. It, it's always a risk of losing mm. some subsidies or having some mm. harm. So it, it should be that kind of more flexible way to do trials in a farm, and and. Second important thing is to make trials together with a group, with, a, with your neighboring farmer or, or in a small group like we do in a carbon action. It's very uh, good that one doesn't have to take all those trials and maybe some yeah. mistakes in, in, in a one farm. But when we have a several farms together making some trials from one uh, measure, for example, in one year, because also one year is kind of long time. In, in you can make rapid trials in lab laboratory, but in, in a field it takes all, mm -hmm. always you know, one year. It can take five years because of uh, crop rotation. So we should start with the small groups of farmers, trialing good practices, and then take them in the wider. Uh, group of farmers. And that's how the, in the car, in the farmer dialogue they felt carbon action sort of making this very safe environment to do trial yeah. together and learn from yeah. each other. So yeah. that's really crucial. Juha. Yes, I have a very short comment about the progress we have been making during the latest 
uh, 30, 40 years. In 1960s and 1970s, when the artificial uh, fertilizers and the commercial seed mixes were available in grassland farming, for example, there were only one or two species in the mixes. I remember that very, very well because I started uh, agri agricultural work with my father on that time. But nowadays, uh, very typically, uh, there is 10 species in the seed mix, commercial seed mixes, even 15, 20. So I think I'm, I'm a bit more optimistic than uh, perhaps than you, uh, the user is that, that we have really made already quite, quite a big progress in, in, the, in the biodiversity, at least uh, when we speak about the grassland farming in Finland. Well, among forerunners, I would say, that is the situation. Now it that should be scaled. Scaling the solutions, exactly. Yes, we go on with the questions. I'm so happy that we have so international audience, and I'm sorry if I cannot pronounce all the names correctly. But there is a question from uh, Muluketa Ayutenev. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, mostly to Yari. Soil health is a good emerging concept for the well-being of humans globally, but I think awareness, knowledge and skills, particularly how would you measure, are limited in developing countries. So how to address such gaps in developing countries? Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I would say that the most of the kind of the uh, the methods that are being developed to verify these impacts of this like a better farming and regenerative farming i think they the applicability of the systems themselves is not limited to any kind of like the the geographical region. So I mean, at least the one we are developing, we are sort of uh, mm, like that, that would be equally applicable to any developing countries as well. And the like maybe because we are use, use them in global climate modeling, for example, similar kind of so that that's also kind of it's not nothing new for us to work sort of globally. And then I, I think that the, uh, with the with the developing countries, the main maybe the main problem is that the we still need to do uh, measurements there at, mm. at the sites is to how to establish the infrastructure for doing these measurements, how to take those measurements from it. Maybe that is, that is the, the biggest, biggest challenge uh, there in the developing countries, at least when we have been like starting to, to work in the developing countries ourselves. So I, we have been seeing that kind of like the, uh, how, how to get the local measurements so that we can apply. But in, in, in the systems themselves, there is nothing that uh, prevents us from using them also globally. Thank you. Yeah, as a politician who has also uh, visited a number of projects with, where we have, as Finland, uh, had development projects in developing countries uh, regarding uh, sustainable farming practices, I think it's important also to note here that we have to make sure that the whole global food security system is based on sustainability everywhere and we don't go to this over chemicalized phase in developing countries, which we have been through in the past. Uh, and and uh, land erosion and other adverse effects of the climate crisis are very acute in, in many uh, developing countries and soil erosion, soil quality uh, worsening is, is also uh, very much there. So, so I, I think uh, issues of, of how you can manage the health of the soil mm. are key actually globally uh, when it comes to, to managing also the climate crisis and that, that means that we have to have uh, sustainability of agriculture in the long term as part of the development and trade policies that we have in, with different countries. That's a good comment. Yeah. yeah, and then just to just to add to that, and I mean that is also like a, we have to acknowledge where the kind of the where the potential of improvement mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and that's not only in industrialized countries, yeah. but yeah. there's a, there's a huge demand for for this knowledge in developing countries, and like Villa, you said, to avoid the kind of mistakes so that the developing countries do not have to follow the same path that the industrial countries have already. Then we go on. Now I want Kati, I think this is specifically for you. Kai Kranholm is asking that Kati, you mentioned in the video that soil attributes could be included in lending or insurance products and contracts. Risk, risk management for the bank assets is one step. Next step is increase in value. How have you studied your clients? What kind of measures they would be ready to buy into? What do they see as the most promising or sensible measure from the bank insurance company perspective? 
along this. <laughs> yeah, so you can't see. Well, um, I think we already discussed this a little bit earlier that, yeah, the measures are needed, that the measurements mm. and the measures are needed together in order for us to value the uh, the kind of the value of the land itself. Uh, nowadays, the pricing or, or the valuation of land is is based on different aspects, not so much on the soil health, for instance. Mm. That's something that I, I think together with the farmers, for instance, could be built in. And I think that would be the interest mm. of the farmers as well, to take care of the soil health by building that in on the valuation of the land itself or the pricing of the land. But um, yeah, I, I, I think the, uh, the, uh, the kind of the business plan together with the farmers is the key for all of this, so that the business plan includes the future potential of the, uh, the uh, um, for instance, the carbon pricing, the soil health, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, products and services that customers are willing to, 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 to acquire in the future. Hopefully we are after for the more sustainable products as a consumers as well. So if those kind of uh, elements could be built in into the products and services of the financing sector, then I, I think that would be the key for this. And then the same, same applies, of course, for the uh, insurance, because the, mm. especially in this insurance business, we look further mm. than five years or so. so. So the soil health there as well, and then taking into account the erosion and, and mm. all that are important aspects. As, uh, and then we are studying that together, and then hopefully with the help of, 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 uh, of the teams from different uh, entities, that we could better understand the risk and opportunities. And I'm, I, because we've been doing this risk work for so long, and I'm doing this also because of the, uh, for instance, the, uh, the, uh, um, the different uh, regulators are uh, requiring us to to go through all the uh, the uh, risk mm -hmm. aspects of every sector that we finance or, or or fund. So I hope that in the future we also are able to take more of the opportunity mm -hmm. side into this. And very this good. needs the help of yeah. the whole community. A very clear answer. And mm. Quite shortly, if you <laughs> and you have because As we always. Have. Yes. Uh, for, the, <laughs> for the economicians, it would help if we would see soil as an asset or mm. as a capital. Mm. Yeah. And I see that the yield I got from my field, from my soil, is actually an interest of, of that capital I get. Mm -hmm. And what's the business that is losing their capital, like in current agricultural business, is done. And I have to mention that when I was doing a generation shift in my, our family farm 2009, and I had to take a loan uh, uh, from the bank to buy the farm from my parents, uh, the banker asked some kind of profitability calculation from my farming business. I told him that this is made by consultant, it doesn't actually matter anything. What you should ask is a plan for soil health uh, mm. management mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah. to rate the, my yep. credibility. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have a I have a bit crazy uh, question to Kati. When we, when, we, when we are going to see the carbon storage uh, of, the, of a certain farm in the balance sheet? I don't know. Hopefully, <laughs> we are building that together. I, I, mean, yeah. I think you yeah. was also yeah. uh, touching yeah. this yeah, point. That's, right. And that's what and I, I meant also in yeah. the kind of uh, the uh, credit worthiness yeah. in the future. And I would also yeah. like to say that for, for politicians, it would be a really good end result yeah. because then we can also subsidize directly the result, yeah. the carbon yeah. uh, increase of the mm. land. But now I want to take still a few questions. So I think this is especially Juha to you. Laura Varbaswa is asking, consumers and fair trade were mentioned as the example in the panel discussion. I'm thinking, would a jointly created carbon farming standard and certification be one missing link from science and production all the way to the consumers? So we go to the certification, which is a familiar topic for you. Yeah, I, I think that's a very, very, very good yes. question. And we are already working on that. Mm. Uh, for example, sustainable uh, grassland farming system. We are we are working with a, with a gold standard mm. to create a kind of kind of a, a, a certified model how to do it. Uh, it's a bit uh, tricky work uh, and and, and takes some time. Mm. But I I totally agree that we are we are really needing these kind of 
certificated systems how to, uh, for our handprint work uh, to mitigate, the, for example, climate and, 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 and biodiversity uh, problems. Thank you. Thank you. And Jari? Yeah, I just want to say very briefly that they, they all, these standards are not ready either. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the standards mm -hmm. are yes. in, in, yeah. in a lot of pressure to, 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 to sort in of progress. more realistic way to, to reflect the, the, the concrete the impact on climate and biodiversity. Just wanted to mention this. Great, thank you. I, I could go on discussing with you for the whole day, but maybe we can continue somewhere in the cafeteria, but I think I have to start ending this very interesting panel discussion. So we were looking for solutions to scale actions to receive impacts, and I think we did find many, many good solutions. Just few take-home messages that I got from this, uh, this discussion. Uh, farmers and advisors need training and need public and private incentives that would really concentrate on what is essential for the soil health. And we have to include soil health, health in the business objectives so that it does profit the farmer as well. And then we do need this reliable monitoring, reporting and verification system and also to communicate the results very clearly and then important to go develop these practical solutions together. Mm. I mm. guess that's sort of the main mm. message from this very nice discussion. Yari, <laughs> looks like you. Uh, yeah. That's not it. That's good. <laughs> final comment. Mm. No, but I'm, I'm sorry to end this. Too, it, it was such a love, nice discussion. And thank you so much also for the audience, for the very good questions and for, for the activity.